A turbo expander, also referred to as a turbo expander or an expansion turbine, is a centrifugal or axial flow turbine, through which a high-pressure gas is expanded to produce work that is often used to drive a compressor or generator. Because work is extracted from the expanding high-pressure gas, the expansion is approximated by an isentropic process, i.e., a constant entropy process, and the low-pressure exhaust gas from the turbine is at a very low temperature, minus 150 degrees Celsius or less depending upon the operating pressure and gas properties. Partial liquefaction of the expanded gas is not uncommon. Turbo expanders are widely used as sources of refrigeration in industrial processes such as the extraction of ethane and natural gas liquids NGLs from natural gas, the liquefaction of gases such as oxygen, nitrogen, helium, argon and krypton and other low-temperature processes. Turbo expanders currently in operation range in size from about 750 W to about 7.5 MW 1 hp to about 10,000 hp. Applications <inaudible> 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 Although turbo expanders are commonly used in low temperature processes, they are used in many other applications. This section discusses one of the low temperature processes, as well as some of the other applications. Electric turbo compound etc. Electric turbo compounding etc. is a technology solution to the challenge of improving the fuel efficiency of gas and diesel engines by recovering waste energy from the exhaust gases. Topic: Power generation. The figure depicts an electric power generation system that uses a heat source, a cooling medium, air, water or other, a circulating working fluid and a turbo expander. The system can accommodate a wide variety of heat sources such as geothermal hot water, Exhaust gas from internal combustion engines burning a variety of fuels natural gas, landfill gas, diesel oil, or fuel oil. A variety of waste heat sources in the form of either gas or liquid, the circulating working fluid usually an organic compound for organic Rankine cycle is pumped to a high pressure and then vaporized in the evaporator by heat exchange with the available heat source. The resulting high pressure vapor flows to the turbo expander, where it undergoes an isentropic expansion and exits as a vapor liquid mixture, which is then condensed into a liquid by heat exchange with the available cooling medium. The condensed liquid is pumped back to the evaporator to complete the cycle. The system in the figure implements a Rankine cycle as it is used in fossil fuel power plants, where water is the working fluid and the heat source is derived from the combustion of natural gas, fuel oil or coal used to generate high-pressure steam. The high-pressure steam then undergoes an isentropic expansion in a conventional steam turbine. The steam turbine exhaust steam is next condensed into liquid water, which is then pumped back to steam generator to complete the cycle. When an organic working fluid such as R134A is used in the Rankine cycle, the cycle is sometimes referred to as an organic Rankine cycle Topic: Refrigeration system A refrigeration system utilizes a compressor, a turbo expander and an electric motor. Depending on the operating conditions, the turbo expander reduces the load on the electric motor by 6 to 15 percent compared to a conventional vapor compression refrigeration system that uses a throttling expansion valve rather than a turbo expander. Basically, this can be seen as a form of turbo compounding. The system employs a high pressure refrigerant, i.e., one with a low normal boiling point, such as Chlorodifluoromethane CHCLF2, known as R22, with a normal boiling point of minus 47 degrees Celsius. 1, 1, 1, 2 tetrafluoroethane C2H2F4, known as R134A, with a normal boiling point of minus 26 degrees Celsius. As shown in the figure, refrigerant vapor is compressed to a higher pressure, resulting in a higher temperature as well. 
The hot, compressed vapor is then condensed into a liquid. The condenser is where heat is expelled from the circulating refrigerant and is carried away by whatever cooling medium is used in the condenser air, water, etc. The refrigerant liquid flows through the turbo expander, where it is vaporized, and the vapor undergoes an isentropic expansion, which results in a low temperature mixture of vapor and liquid. The vapor liquid mixture is then routed through the evaporator, where it is vaporized by heat absorbed from the space being cooled. The vaporized refrigerant flows to the compressor inlet to complete the cycle. Topic. Power recovery in fluid catalytic cracker The combustion flue gas from the catalyst regenerator of a fluid catalytic cracker is at a temperature of about 715 degrees Celsius and at a pressure of about 2.4 bar 240 kilopascals gauge. Its gaseous components are mostly carbon monoxide CO, carbon dioxide CO2, and nitrogen N2. Although the flue gas has been through two stages of cyclones located within the regenerator to remove entrained catalyst fines, it still contains some residual catalyst fines. The figure depicts how power is recovered and utilized by routing the regenerator flue gas through a turbo expander. After the flue gas exits the regenerator, it is routed through a secondary catalyst separator containing swell tubes designed to remove 70 to 90% of the residual catalyst fines. This is required to prevent erosion damage to the turbo expander. As shown in the figure, expansion of the flue gas through a turbo expander provides sufficient power to drive the regenerator's combustion air compressor. The electrical motor generator in the power recovery system can consume or produce electrical power. If the expansion of the flue gas does not provide enough power to drive the air compressor, the electric motor generator provides the needed additional power. If the flue gas expansion provides more power than needed to drive the air compressor, then the electric motor generator converts the excess power into electric power and exports it to the refinery's electrical system. The steam turbine is used to drive the regenerator's combustion air compressor during startups of the fluid catalytic cracker until there is sufficient combustion flue gas to take over that task. The expanded flue gas is then routed through a steam generating boiler referred to as a CO boiler, where the carbon monoxide in the flue gas is burned as fuel to provide steam for use in the refinery. The flue gas from the CO boiler is processed through an electrostatic precipitator ESP to remove residual particulate matter. The ESP removes particulates in the size range of 2 to 20 micrometers from the flue gas. Topic. Extracting hydrocarbon liquids from natural gas Raw natural gas consists primarily of methane CH4, the shortest and lightest hydrocarbon molecule, along with various amounts of heavier hydrocarbon gases such as ethane C2H6, propane C3H8, normal butane NC4H10, isobutane IC4H10, pentanes and even higher molecular mass hydrocarbons. The raw gas also contains various amounts of acid gases such as carbon dioxide CO2, hydrogen sulfide H2S, and mercaptans such as methanethiol CH3SH, and ethanethiol C2H5SH. When processed into finished by-products see natural gas processing, these heavier hydrocarbons are collectively referred to as NGL natural gas liquids. The extraction of the NGL often involves a turbo expander and a low temperature distillation column called a demethanizer as shown in the figure. The inlet gas to the demethanizer is first cooled to about minus 51 degrees Celsius in a heat exchanger referred to as a cold box, which partially condenses the inlet gas. The resultant gas liquid mixture is then separated into a gas stream and a liquid stream. The liquid stream from the gas liquid separator flows through a valve and undergoes a throttling expansion from an absolute pressure of 62 bars to 21 bars, 6.2 to 2.1 megapascals, which is an isenthalpic process, i.e., a constant enthalpy process that results in lowering the temperature of the stream from about minus 51 degrees Celsius to about minus 81 degrees Celsius as the stream enters the demethanizer. 
The gas stream from the gas liquid separator enters the turbo expander, where it undergoes an isentropic expansion from an absolute pressure of 62 bars to 21 bars, 6.2 to 2.1 megapascals, that lowers the gas stream temperature from about minus 51 degrees Celsius to about minus 91 degrees Celsius as it enters the demethanizer to serve as distillation reflux. Liquid from the top tray of the demethanizer at about minus 90 degrees Celsius is routed through the cold box, where it is warmed to about 0 degrees Celsius as it cools the inlet gas, and is then returned to the lower section of the demethanizer. Another liquid stream from the lower section of the demethanizer at about 2 degrees Celsius is routed through the cold box and returned to the demethanizer at about 12 degrees Celsius. In effect, the inlet gas provides the heat required to reboil the bottom of the demethanizer, and the turbo expander removes the heat required to provide reflux in the top of the demethanizer. The overhead gas product from the demethanizer at about minus 90 degrees Celsius is processed natural gas that is of suitable quality for distribution to end-use consumers by pipeline. It is routed through the cold box, where it is warmed as it cools the inlet gas. It is then compressed in the gas compressor driven by the turbo expander and further compressed in a second stage gas compressor driven by an electric motor before entering the distribution pipeline. The bottom product from the demethanizer is also warmed in the cold box, as it cools the inlet gas, before it leaves the system as NGL. The operating conditions of an offshore gas conditioning turbo expander, recompressor are as follows. Topic. History The possible use of an expansion machine for acentropically creating low temperatures was suggested by Carl Wilhelm Siemens, Siemens Cycle, a German engineer in 1857. About three decades later, in 1885, Ernest Solvay of Belgium attempted to use a reciprocating expander machine, but could not attain any temperatures lower than minus 98 degrees Celsius because of problems with lubrication of the machine at such temperatures. In 1902, Georges Claude, a French engineer, successfully used a reciprocating expansion machine to liquefy air. He used a degreased, burnt leather packing as a piston seal without any lubrication. With an air pressure of only 40 bars 4 megapascals, Claude achieved an almost isentropic expansion resulting in a lower temperature than had before been possible. The first turbo expanders seemed to have been designed in about 1934 or 1935 by Guido Zerkowitz, an Italian engineer working for the German firm of Lindag. In 1939, the Russian physicist Pyotr Kapitsa perfected the design of centrifugal turbo expanders. His first practical prototype was made of monol metal, had an outside diameter of only 8 cm in, operated at 40,000 revolutions per minute and expanded 1,000 cubic meters of air per hour. It used a water pump as a brake and had an efficiency of 79-83%. Most turbo expanders in industrial use since then have been based on Kapitza's design, and centrifugal turbo expanders have taken over almost 100% of the industrial gas liquefaction and low temperature process requirements. The availability of liquid oxygen revolutionized the production of steel using the basic oxygen steelmaking process. In 1978, Potter Kapitza was awarded a Nobel Physics Prize for his body of work in the area of low temperature physics. In 1983, San Diego Gas and Electric was among the first to install a turbo expander in a natural gas letdown station for energy recovery. <laughs> Topic. Types Turbo expanders can be classified by loading device or bearings. Three main loading devices used in turbo expanders are centrifugal compressors, electrical generators or hydraulic brakes. With centrifugal compressors and electrical generators the shaft power from the turbo expander is recouped either to recompress the process gas or to generate electrical energy, lowering utility bills. Hydraulic brakes are used when the turbo expander is very small and harvesting the shaft power is not economically justifiable. Bearings used are either oil bearings or magnetic bearings. 
One should also notice the new Quasha turbine technology, which is a positive displacement rotary turbine type. Topic. See also Air separation Dry gas seal Flash evaporation Gas compressor Joule Thomson effect Liquefaction of gases Rankine cycle Steam turbine Vapor compression refrigeration Hydrogen turbo expander generator <laughs>